tensions. Like Freud and Jung, Sullivan saw personality as an energy system. Energy can exist as either tension, potentiality for action, or as actions themselves, energy transformations. Energy transformations transform tensions into either covert or overt behaviors and are aimed at satisfying needs and reducing anxiety. Tension is a potentiality for action that may or may not be experienced in awareness. Thus, not all tensions are consciously felt. Many tensions, such as anxiety, premonitions, drowsiness, hunger, and sexual excitement, are felt but not always on a conscious level. In fact, probably all felt tensions are at least partial distortions of reality. Sullivan recognized two types of tensions, needs and anxiety. Needs usually result in productive actions, whereas anxiety leads to non-productive or disintegrative behaviors. Needs Needs are tensions brought on by biological imbalance between a person and the physiochemical environment, both inside and outside the organism. Needs are episodic once they are satisfied, they temporarily lose their power, but after a time, they are likely to recur. Although needs originally have a biological component, many of them stem from the interpersonal situation. The most basic interpersonal need is tenderness. An infant develops a need to receive tenderness from its primary caretaker, called by Sullivan the mothering one. Unlike some needs, tenderness requires actions from at least two people. For example, an infant's need to receive tenderness may be expressed as a cry, smile, or coo, whereas the mother's need to give tenderness may be transformed into touching, fondling, or holding. In this example, the need for tenderness is satisfied through the use of the infant's mouth and the mother's hands. Tenderness is a general need because it is concerned with the overall well-being of a person. General needs, which also include oxygen, food, and water, are opposed to zonal needs, which arise from a particular area of the body. Several areas of the body are instrumental in satisfying both general and zonal needs. For example, the mouth satisfies general needs by taking in food and oxygen, but it also satisfies the zonal need for oral activity. Also, the hands may be used to help satisfy the general need of tenderness, but they can likewise be used to satisfy the zonal need for manual activity. Similarly, other body zones, such as the anus and the genitals, can be used to satisfy both kinds of needs. Very early in life, the various zones of the body begin to play a significant and lasting role in interpersonal relations. While satisfying general needs for food, water, and so forth, an infant expends more energy than necessary, and the excess energy is transformed into consistent characteristic modes of behavior, which Sullivan called dynamisms. Anxiety A second type of tension, anxiety, differs from tensions of needs in that it is disjunctive, is more diffuse and vague, and calls forth no consistent actions for its relief. If infants lack food, a need, their course of action is clear, but if they are anxious, they can do little to escape from that anxiety. How does anxiety originate? Sullivan postulated that it is transferred from the parent to the infant through the process of empathy. Anxiety in the mothering one inevitably induces anxiety in the infant. Because all mothers have some amount of anxiety while caring for their babies, all infants will become anxious to some degree. Just as the infant does not have the capacity to reduce anxiety, the parent has no effective means of dealing with the baby's anxiety. Any signs of anxiety or insecurity by the infant are likely to lead to attempts by the parent to satisfy the infant's needs. For example, a mother may feed her anxious, crying baby because she mistakes anxiety for hunger. If the baby hesitates in accepting the milk, the mother may become more anxious herself, which generates additional anxiety within the infant. Finally, the baby's anxiety reaches a level at which it interferes with sucking and swallowing. Anxiety, then, operates in opposition to tensions of needs and prevents them from being satisfied. Anxiety has a deleterious effect on adults too. It is the chief disruptive force blocking the development of healthy interpersonal relations. Sullivan likened severe anxiety to a blow on the head. 
It makes people incapable of learning, impairs memory, narrows perception, and may result in complete amnesia. It is unique among the tensions in that it maintains the status quo even to people's overall detriment. Whereas other tensions result in actions directed specifically toward their relief, anxiety produces behaviors that, 1, prevent people from learning from their mistakes, 2, keep people pursuing a childish wish for security, and, 3, generally ensure that people will not learn from their experiences. Sullivan insisted that anxiety and loneliness are unique among all experiences in that they are totally unwanted and undesirable. Because anxiety is painful, people have a natural tendency to avoid it, inherently preferring the state of euphoria, or complete lack of tension. Sullivan summarized this concept by stating simply that the presence of anxiety is much worse than its absence. Sullivan distinguished anxiety from fear in several important ways. First, anxiety usually stems from complex interpersonal situations and is only vaguely represented in awareness. Fear is more clearly discerned and its origins more easily pinpointed. Second, anxiety has no positive value. Only when transformed into another tension, anger or fear, for example, can it lead to profitable actions. Third, anxiety blocks the satisfaction of needs, whereas fear sometimes helps people satisfy certain needs. This opposition to the satisfaction of needs is expressed in words that can be considered Sullivan's definition of anxiety. Anxiety is a tension in opposition to the tensions of needs and to action appropriate to their relief. Energy transformations. Tensions that are transformed into actions, either overt or covert, are called energy transformations. This somewhat awkward term simply refers to our behaviors that are aimed at satisfying needs and reducing anxiety the two great tensions. Not all energy transformations are obvious, overt actions, many take the form of emotions, thoughts, or covert behaviors that can be hidden from other people.